Hello. If you're testing an embedded software project, then at any time, what you probably want to be able to know is, well, what is the status of my testing? And that's what I'm going to be showing today. Now, this is the project I'm interested in. I've used the Kyle Microvision uh, IDE and I'm targeting here a Cortex M7. So what I'd like to be able to do is to take a look at this code and see, is it compliant to a coding standard such as MISRA? Well, I know here, first of all, I have a, a violation because I have an infinite loop. So I'll actually put a justification into the code to indicate that, well, I have to have a main loop, which is always infinite. OK, so once I've checked the code is compliant to a coding standard, I will also want to be able to check that it's not over complex. So I want to be able to measure a number of metrics on that code. Then I want to be able to execute the code. And as it executes, I want to be able to find out, well, as we go around this loop, how much of the code are we actually exercising? Once I've done that, I'll then want to do some unit testing to test basically every individual function. So what I put in place is basically a batch file, which is going to run as we can see here. So in this particular case, I'm setting the compiler to be the, the Kyle Microvision with the ARM compiler 6. I'm deleting the results, running the analysis. I'm instrumenting, building, and then executing on the target. At a certain time, I'll then say, OK, let's stop. Let's get the coverage off the target. And then I'm going to iterate through all the test case files inside this folder here and execute them. And as we can see in this particular case, they're all shown as, as passing. Then I'm going to generate the dynamic data flow coverage. And finally, I'm going to generate a number of reports. So let's take a look at those reports. So here we have a, a number of reports that have been generated or linked together. And the starting point is going to be the test manager report, which gives me a very quick status of, well, what's the state of my project? As far as the code review is concerned, it looks like, oh, I've got a lot of work to be done there, a lot of violations. What about the quality of the code? Well, that's where we're measuring various metrics, giving us an idea is the code clear, maintainable and testable. And uh, it doesn't look too bad. But this file here, we can take a look at that later. It does look like it's got a, a few issues. What about the test verification? Well, in this particular case, I've measured statement coverage, branch decision coverage and MCDC. And we can see the coverage we've obtained. Once again, for this particular file, the statement coverage is a little low. I've also executed unit tests, and as we can see, uh, they've all passed, and from that I've been able to get the coverage that we've seen up here. Okay, well let's start maybe by taking a look at the guideline compliance summary, and as we expect, the code is not compliant against the MISRA C 2012 standard. We have quite a few violations that we've, or guidelines that we've, we've violated, and we can see down here that that is the case. All right, uh, we also have one guideline deviation. Well, let's take a look at that. And here, if I go into here, we can see we have one deviation, and that was done by the comment that I showed in the code earlier. And there we can see potentially infinite loop found. I've justified that, well, we always have, always have to have a main loop that is infinite. What about the quality of the code? Well, let's go and take a look at a quality review. So the quality review, we're going to be able to see, as we saw, clarity, maintainability and testability. And this file here looks like we have the most issues. Let's go and take a look at that. And here we can see, well, first of all, we have quite a few exit points. Not really a, a problem, but uh, Mr. does want you to only have a, a single exit point. What about uh, looking at things like the complexity metrics? So in this particular case, we can see this one here has got a value of 14. Well, that's probably OK. I could justify that. I probably set the threshold at, at 10 for the cyclomatic complexity. This one's got a value of 31. That probably needs to be refactored. This one here has got a value of 117. Well, there's no doubt about that. That really has to be rewritten and refactored. It really is way too high. I could have seen the same information by looking at the his metrics. So here we're looking at the his metrics. And once again, if I dive down into the file where we have the, the issues, we can see we have three non-compliant uh, metrics for the cyclomatic complexity. And there we can see we're measuring the cyclomatic complexity, same value we saw earlier, but also we're showing the number of paths through the code. 
And as we can see, we have four and a half million paths through this bit of code. Clearly, that is not going to be easy to understand, maintain or test. So that's the, the metrics. What about the, the code coverage? Well, let's start by looking at function coverage. In this particular case, we can see there's three functions that have not been executed. And we can see they're all inside this file here. We can navigate to that file and we can see we've not executed, for instance, how MPU disable. Well, I'm not surprised because if I disable the MPU, I imagine my software would, would stop. So probably I would need to remove these from my project. That's function coverage. What about call coverage? Well, call coverage is ensuring have we executed every function from every place where it can be called. And once again, if we go into one of these files, we can see that uh, there's a call here to how init tick, where we've called this one from this place, but we haven't called how init tick from this function here. We can see that's not covered. Code coverage. Let's take a look at code coverage. And again, we're going to be able to, to dive into this. We can go into this problematic file again here, scroll down, and we're going to be able to see the, the coverage. Once again, we can go into an individual function. And there we can see clearly in green, we've executed all these lines of code. These haven't been executed. And that's understandable because we've never had the HAL timeout there. Right, what else? What about uh, control coupling? So control coupling is basically looking at all the places where two functions are calling each other. And we can see, if we just dive into here, we've got a certain number of, of couples. So in this particular case, we've got five that are covered. And if I scroll down, I can see, once again, we've got this how set tick frequency. And basically, that hasn't been called. What about data coupling? Well, data coupling, once again, we're looking at data. Once again, we can go into a particular file. We can look at all the data inside here. In this particular case, we can see once again, we have this how set tick frequency. And inside there, there is a variable that's being passed as a, a parameter to another function. And once again, we can see clearly that's not been executed. OK, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can report on the project status. And if you'd like any more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.